Hi there and welcome back to Japan where today I'm going to be checking out more perfume. Now this one was recommended to me and the name is too weird to not mention it. Um, again, this phone doesn't show you the title in full but it's like Edge Triangle written as a triangle something. Um, it's just weird. Anyway, this is a live video and it's about eight minutes long so I'm not going to waste too much time getting into it. Basically, as just to say though, I'm a really um, big fan of the producer who they work with and I know they've got fantastic visuals is one of their main thing. They do an amazing stage show and their video is always really interesting as well. So they've got a great visual aspect. They've got a good producer who makes good pop music. Um, I love the work that he does with them and with Chiari. And... Um, this, so this is the first time I've actually seen a live video by them, but this is um, something, well, I, I've always been interested by the fact their songs seem to be really, really catchy and enjoyable. Even if sometimes they're a little bit samey, they're always very enjoyable and catchy. Uh, the most recent one I listened to is probably the least so of all of them. And, you know, as a pop artist, catchiness is what I go for. Obviously, that's one of the main things you're looking for. Um, so I'm really interested to see, is this a really catchy one or do they go in a different direction? But either way, I'm sure it's going to be good. So let's see what we get from this and go. No? Oh, yeah. Very visual build up. That's one hell of a beat, and it's hypnotic as well. We've got a great beat, we've got great visuals, we've got a great build up. It's all about where it goes from here. Are they going to get the payoff? Love that change up, adding the chords into it because the beat was fantastic. You know, prodigy level of like intensity. Not quite as mad, but still that amount of intensity. And then adding the chord change just suddenly builds up from nowhere. That extra element. And again.
These little change-ups are fantastic. Each one of them just musically enhances it really well without changing that core. The core remains. So this verse is kind of more of a refrain. This kind of is the hook. So it's not really a verse chorus, it's just like a club song. It's just like, here, you know, here's your EDM hook. This whole change, they've managed to infuse a lot of feeling and emotion into it. It's the fact that it's actually managed to stick to that core, but also change the feeling throughout. Always with those Illuminati triangles. I'm glad to hear the audience actually, because I was starting to wonder whether that was like a a, um, a rehearsal run, because you didn't see the audience at all, but it was just the fixed camera looking at the live show. Um, and I'm not surprised actually, because that, that was so fantastically presented. Okay, there's a lot to talk about, because that was a fantastic use of eight minutes actually. Um, Obviously, this song um, more veers towards an uh, EDM approach, really, than a normal pop song. Uh, certainly, like, you look at songs there's like Tokyo Girl, that's more of a pop song. This is certainly a lot more EDM, so I'm going to judge it on those values. And on those values, this is it's fantastic, really, if you think about it. Um, eight minutes, in my opinion, it doesn't get boring. Um, the thing which is so fantastic about that, I mean, if you look at any... EDM style or club style song. The idea is to have a solid core, something that keeps people dancing, but you also need it not to get boring. You need to be able to change the intensity so that people can, you know, they can know when to dance harder and when to dance less. You can, if you can add feeling and mood into it, that's a very, very difficult thing to do actually with a club song to properly do that, especially to have changes of mood and changes of tone throughout. And the other thing is also you've got to add layers. You've got to add things that change the song 
but without sounding out of place. And this seemed to have a load of everything over the time. Um, I mean, one of the easiest techniques if you're trying to change the feeling of a song which has a, a very strong core, like that blah, 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 bass drum thing that's going on there, is just to have like um, have a chord pattern come in that just sort of holds over some of the notes and just adds feelings of the changing of chords. Music 101, changing chords is how you can build and change the emotion in a song in the most simple core way. Um, and that's something that this song did. But it waited a while to do that. It got you really hooked in with the simple refrain, vocal refrain, um, with the burda burda beat, which was beautifully produced, really, really crunchy and just sounded fantastic. It got you in with that. And so you were kind of thinking that's kind of all this is going to be. And then hit you with the change. One of the weirdest comparison, and I'm surprised if anyone's even heard of this song. This is like a pop song from back in the 90s, like a pop song, rock song from the 90s. It just kind of reminded me of... If anyone's heard the song Sit Down by a band that was called James, I think it was like a one-hit wonder. I'm pretty sure it was a band called James with a song called Sit Down. That was kind of a similar thing. The song starts off with just a very simple, even though it's a rock song, just everything seems to be in one note. And then when the chorus comes in, that's when you get your first chord change and it really hits you hard. Because you're suddenly like, you didn't know that's what it was missing until it came along. And that's what this had. You know, you, you were so into the beat, well, at least I was so into the beat, that you didn't know that you were missing any change of chord until a change of chord happened, and it just hit you. It's like, that's what we needed. Um, and then there was, like, little changes, like extra little vocal melodies came in, little chord changes came in again, changes of tone, it went more quiet, it went more loud. It just seemed to never run out of tricks, and yet always stayed true to that sort of dancey core at the centre of it. Um... It was just very, very engaging. And to be honest, I could have listened to that for ages, um, which is fantastic, because usually most, I'll be honest, most EDM and club music gets really dull for me really quickly. I think the nearest thing to that that I really enjoy is stuff like Prodigy. Um, but Prodigy has a musical element like this, um, in that it's that ability to take a core and then move a lot of things around it and keep it interesting. So, yeah, th this was, to me, on that sort of Prodigy level of being really really intensely dancey and like really you know, head banging like ravey quality but at the same time you could sit down and listen to it as a song which is fantastic um on a visual aspect we have to talk about the visuals obviously they were fantastic as always you know just the brilliant things like them sort of appearing from the computer screens with their digital cells morphing into their actual selves the way that they interacted with the <laughs> their own faces behind them the whole dance thing the lighting thing it was amazing um i assuming just if they were really singing there um, you never know. I mean, I guess it's not really important when you're looking at something like that. But if they were singing live there, then they were being auto-tuned at the same time, which is quite interesting. I was discussing this before, actually, on a different one. I think it was um, uh, Passcode they were talking about, um, where they were being auto-tuned as they were singing live. And I was trying to think, is that really a bad thing or a good thing? It sounds like a terrible thing. And I thought, if the auto-tune is part of the sound of the song, then I guess you kind of have to do it. It's like saying to someone who's playing a metal song, well, you have to play that acoustic because you, know, you can't hide behind your distortion. It's like, well, no, but distortion is part of the song. So um, if they were singing for auto-tune, that's, that's, to be honest, that's fine. But um, I was wondering, well, are they actually singing this or not? But anyway, yeah, I'm really impressed with that. Really enjoyed it. Not what I expected. It kind of more confirms my suspicion that they do um, bias towards a sort of club sound occasionally but they did that really well. In fact, I was quite shocked. I mean, it says a lot about the producer. I'm assuming this is the same producer. To, again, correct me if I'm wrong, because the sound was a bit different from normal. But I was shocked. I saw uh, Chiari twice in London live when I was uh, doing some work for an uh, online magazine uh, do, talking about Japanese music. And um, it really struck me how her songs translated fantastically from sort of a cutesy pop into really effective club atmosphere when you saw her live. And that seems to perhaps be a, either a, an encouragement or a symptom of the whole perfume thing where they seem to already have that nailed. But anyway, enough waffling from now. It'd be lovely to know what you guys think. This is very different from a lot of the music we hear on this channel usually, but I really like that. And I hope you guys did too. Feel free to leave your comments, your thoughts. Do you think this is out of character for perfume, in character for them? What do you think of the song? Do you think it compares to EDM? Do you think it compares to pop? Let's just get some conversation going as normal. And as usual, I have loads of videos that you can check online at any time. You can like things if you want to. You can comment. You can subscribe. Looks like I'm swimming through the internet. Main thing is, though, 
be really happy if you get involved and feel free to watch future videos because for now it is a ciao ciao